Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I have the uh, Hubson Zeno Mini Pro with me today. We just had an app update, an update to the X Hubson 2 app, and also a firmware update for the drone. Now, I want to tell you that this is the original Hubson Zeno Mini Pro, uh, the original one that I purchased. Uh, Hubson has told me by looking at my flight records that they feel there's an issue with the motherboard on this drone and they are going to ship me another one. Uh, but I went ahead and loaded that firmware update on this one here and uh, just thought I'd see if we could check some things out with the camera, etc. I'm right here at the schoolyard that's pretty close to my house, so close by. We're not going to fly the drone very far. Uh, and uh, so anyway just want to check that stuff out and I also am going to add uh, that I, all, I, I test flew the drone the other day and had a pretty successful flight with it without any disconnections like I've had in the past so I don't know if that's firmware or what uh, if you followed my older videos uh, I, I, had dis I had issues with the uh, what I assumed was the OTG cable from the uh, remote control to my mobile device. I use an iPhone 11 Pro. I also, the other day, brought out my Google Pixel 3 to see if uh, an Android device worked any better than the, uh, the iOS device. And if anything, it was a little bit worse. And I, I had connection issues with it as well. So that kind of tells me that maybe it is just exactly what uh, the Hubson engineers believe to be and could be an issue with the motherboard. But in any case, we're going to fly this guy because I think some of the uh, things that they uh, updated had to do with the camera. So uh, we'll be very careful, but we'll check it out and see how it is. Let me look at the changes so I can uh, uh, tell you what they are. And I'm going to get my phone out so I can read them off to you and get them right. So okay, with regard to the app, they're saying that the Xeno Mini Pro opens the photo album preview and image color setting. Xeno Mini Pro adds temperature monitoring system, and I, I saw that when I was upgrading the drone. I saw the little temperature bug at the bottom, and then it says it fixes known bugs and improves user experience. That's, uh, that's a pretty standard one, but that's always good. Fixing known bugs is always good. Then with regard to the uh, firmware update of the uh, drone, it upgraded it to version 1.2.8, uh, newly added the function of photo album direct connection and quick upload and photo preview. So what I believe that is, is either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth uploading it to a mobile device or something. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Improve the photo quality and solve the problem of bluish image IQ. So we've all, we've noticed that. So we'll see how that looks. And it said, and I saw this in the app when I was updating it at home, uh, add uh, natural, sunny, and war off shooting modes. Now, I'm no photography or video expert, but what moir is, is when you have horizontal lines and they can make patterns on a video that's what they're saying so how you turn that off i'm not sure and i don't know why it would be uh, in color settings I, I, i'm not sure like i said you guys that are experts on video will know more of that than i do but we'll try the different settings out and we'll see how it looks now we have a day today here uh in uh where in idaho that's pretty mild so i'm looking at uav forecast it says 88 degrees uh little to no wind three mile an hour wind with seven mile an hour gusts i feel nothing right now uh, and it says sunny, but I'm telling you, it's kind of, we've got some smoke, so it's a little bit hazy. And we're late in the afternoon here, so the sun is, is low on the horizon. But uh, in any case, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Hey, I'm interrupting the start of the flight here because uh, I wanted to show you the screenshots of the uh, notes on what is changing with uh, both of these updates, the app update and the firmware update. Uh, but more importantly, I wanted to talk a little bit about the video that I observed off of the memory of the drone. Uh, this update, while it was supposed to improve the video quality, 
I, I, it just did not. And in fact, the video now looks uh, out of focus and very, very soft. So uh, I just wanted you to let you guys know that I'm aware of that. And I saw it while looking at the video. And it's really disappointing. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead with the rest of the flight here. Yeah, so uh, the remote and everything is working perfectly now. Uh, the remote connected to the drone quickly. Uh, no issues with connection uh, to the uh, uh, mobile device. So we're going to enter device now. And you always get that USB cable is not connected at the very beginning. But look at that. Now it's giving us the uh, ready to fly. And, and it gives us that message uh, that you, the, it, it does not turn on uh, uh, video. So the camera is not on until you launch the drone. And then here I will, uh, uh, I'll put a screenshot of this. Uh, well, I guess you can kind of see it here. We have that warning. I guess I can't get that off of there, but, uh, but it's telling what the, uh, what the updates are, uh, upcoming updates, uh, and it tells what was recently updated. And we just talked about that. So, uh, let's go through here. It obviously says we're connected. Gives us the, uh, the the firmware versions. Let me pull that down so you can see it. Uh, if you're interested in that, compass is normal, horizontal is normal, gimbal is normal. So there's nothing to do there. We're at 96% battery. I use this battery to do the update, the firmware update to the drone. So it's down a little bit. And uh, then of course they give you that information about the uh, pilot assistance system, which by that they mean the obstacle avoidance. So. Let's get out of there, and uh, we can't adjust anything in the camera till we take off. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I can think of here that we need to look at. Yeah, 50 meters is plenty. We don't need it even that high. I'm gonna. I went down to 35 meters on return to home. Auxiliary light is on automatic. Uh, I'm not going to turn on automatic brake as the obstacle avoidance. We can turn that on outside of this menu and we'll turn that on if we need it. Uh, searching for drone apron. Let's just see. Yeah, no, that is not available yet. So that's worth checking. We can look at the battery real quick. The battery looks good. You can tell uh, uh, both the uh, battery cells there are in good shape. So uh, yeah, let's just get out of there and uh, Let's go ahead and take off. Let me get out of the way so you can see it here. And we're going to hit takeoff on the uh, on the app. So right now, so I'll tell you, if nothing else, with this drone, Hubson has done a remarkable job of improving the stability of their drones. I mean, that, that thing is, uh, it's solid in the air. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's not much more to say about that. And you, you couldn't say that on, on previous versions of the drone. So we're turning it around here. Let's, uh, and we'll bring it in, but let's see, I forgot we should start some video. Uh, let's go into the uh, menu here and we want to look, uh, let's, gosh, I'm sorry, we're in photo mode. Let's switch to video mode. Let's go back into that menu. Click on the little video thing. We're 4K, 30 frames. That's where I want to be. Let's click on the three dots below that. Uh, uh, video bit rate uh, is at 100. Uh, I want to move that all the way up. We want to get the best quality video we can. And let's go back. Now CCT, I believe what they mean there is white balance and it says it'll be available soon. And you can see it changed. It says it's 4,800, so it's on automatic. And then the color, and this is the one that I was telling you about, natural, sunny day, or more off. So we'll mess around with that and we'll, we'll fly back and forth and we'll change that a little bit and we'll see what differences we can see. So let's leave that on natural for now. And uh, yeah, you can also, I want to point out at the bottom uh, right hand side of the screen, see CPU temperature there at the bottom of the screen recorder. Okay, we're going to start recording now. And we're recording and uh, let's go ahead and turn on obstacle avoidance and, uh, and bring it in. And this says, you, you know, you have to recalibrate. Well, I've done that calibration before, so we're going to open that up and let's, uh, let's bring it towards us. And let's see if it if it sees us. 
Well, it's beeping. Yeah, it finally stopped there. So, so it's beeping. It's, it's sauce just fine, but it's pretty close. I'm going to say, you know, I could almost reach out and touch it. Uh, so it's pretty close, but let's, uh, let's rock it back and forth. And you can see that little gimbal in, in action there. And I got to tell you, uh, the drone is performing just great right here. I, 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 can, I don't have an issue at all. Uh, connection is good. Everything's good. FPV looks good. Okay, let's back it up a little. And you can see that uh, the way the camera drops when you back up. And in, when you go forward, you can see the camera point up. So that's why you're in sport mode. Oftentimes that camera will dip because it does not want to look at the front of the drone. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to drop the gimbal down here, get ready, and we're going to do our usual manual droney. And remember, we're in natural on that color mode. And so reverse and up now. And we're in normal mode. And, and we've got obstacle avoidance on, so that restricts our speed a little bit. Let's turn it off. And look at how much the drone speeds up then. And I'm picking up some height there. So you can see the drone really speeds up. So there is a difference when that obstacle avoidance is on. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to move it sideways here a little bit. And we're going to go straight forward. Eh, let's pick up some more altitude. Let's go up about 25 meters or so, a little bit more, 27 is where we settled there. Uh, and I see it, the horizon is just a little tiny bit crooked, not too bad. I've seen that before, and it, but it tends to straighten itself out. So we're going full stick forward, and we are at uh, about 8 meters per second. And this is looking into the sun. We're looking due west here. Drone is going right over the top of us. About eight and a half meters per second now. That's about, you know, roughly 20 miles an hour or so. Doing the conversion in my head. And look at our, uh, our horizon straightened out. And I found that to be typical of this guy. So, okay, so now we're going to turn around here, turn to our right. And by the way, just for, the, just for uh, your information, I am facing directly away from the drone with the controller right now. You can see the drone's not terribly far away from me at about 190 meters, but I just wanted to point out I've got the controller facing exactly the wrong way, away from the drone, and God, we got a great connection here. Uh, good uh, good uh, FPV, looking good. Uh, you know... It, it, it really is too early to say, but I'm, I'm liking this firmware update, uh, you know, from what I've seen so far. And then you can see that, you know, the, 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 the camera on the drone is in automatic, so you can see it change as we, as we put the sun uh, behind us. And that was me picking up the gimbal there. And uh, let's, let's move back a little bit. I am, I'm moving the drone sideways here. And then we're going to go full stick forward here. And, uh, and go towards uh, Discovery Elementary, which is kind of across the road there. And uh, fortunately, on a Sunday evening, there is we have got this place to ourselves, which is nice. So we don't have to worry about flying over people or anything. We're, we're in good shape. Uh, and then it looks like the roadway is pretty darn clear. And again, we're at about 8.5 meters, so that appears to be top per second, which appears to be top speed in uh, uh, normal mode and again for a mini drone you know that's pretty darn good in my opinion so I'm gonna go here comes a car uh, on the street there and it's honking its horn for some reason don't know why honking its horn and flashing its lights okay so I am going to uh, turn the drone here in a direction that I show often with drones, and uh, and you know I got to tell you the uh, the horizon is just perfectly flat. <laughs> Man, this is looking good. Uh, so you can see the uh, the Boise Mountains off in the distance. I was like this shot. Let me back it up just a tad. I like this shot because you see you know a little bit close up. You see the roof of the school. 
you see the colorful play structures in front of it and then you see the greenery of the homes and everything right there and then the mountains off in the distance. I just always thought this is a good way to look at some of the various uh, characteristics of what you see with a drone camera because you got near, you got mid distance and you got far and you can all see them all in, in, in one picture there. Uh, so okay let's uh, let's turn it around back to us and uh, and we'll find we'll change that color setting when we get back and we'll just uh, we'll try that a similar pattern and and see if we see any differences in uh, in what we can see on the video and look at the CPU temperature has reduced I just noticed that I wasn't looking at it earlier so it's down to 64 65 centigrade which uh, we were we were much higher than that when we were just hovering upon takeoff so let me bring it around here and bring it back in and this is kind of let me drop the gimbal just a little bit this is similar to where we started uh, that other that other video so okay so we're gonna go into the uh, well I guess I'm gonna great grab a little altitude make sure we clear the cell phone tower uh, I should have known that huh Okay, let's uh, let's go. We're gonna. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna have to stop recording to change that setting. Well, I believe I don't know. Let's try it. No, yeah, you got to stop recording first. So I'm gonna stop recording now, and we're gonna go into the camera menu again. Click on those three dots, and we're gonna go into color, and we're gonna select sunny day, and let's see how that changes our video. Now I didn't see a big change on FPV, but that doesn't mean that it won't change what we see off the recorded video on the drone. So let's start recording again. And let's go full stick forward one more time here. Right over the top of my favorite cell phone tower. And that cell phone tower, by the way, is making some noise today. It's humming like crazy. I noticed that, I don't know if it's because there's nobody else out here and it's quiet, but Man, I noticed the hum from that tower as soon as I pulled up. So again, I mean, I'm just telling you, this looks very similar to me. We had it on natural and moved it to sunny day, and I'm not seeing a huge difference on FPV, but that does not mean that we won't see a difference on uh, when, when we download the video off of the drone, so... And again, if you if you don't know, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the Xeno Mini Pro, it has internal memory. Uh, and the, you know, the other thing that I'm just going to tell you is a little bit remarkable right now. And look at our CPU temperature dropped even more. Uh, is that uh, you know we just this drone is it's operating perfectly. And there must be somebody playing. Uh, frisbee golf because I heard somebody yelling off in the distance there evidently they didn't uh, like their shot I don't know if you guys heard it but it was a little bit of profanity <laughs> okay so full stick forward again yeah and I see the, the the discs flying off in the distance so that's exactly what's going on okay so full stick forward and again we should get up to about that eight and a half meters per second and you guys uh, you know like I said I don't see any big difference on uh, the FPV view that I'm looking at but uh, you know it's very possible that uh, that you'll see it on the video once I download it from the drone and so we'll go right back over the top of discovery school and and get that same look we'll take that same shot man and I'm just telling you I'm getting just the FPV view on this thing this drone I, I know I've had troubles with it in the past but I can't complain about this flight I gotta tell you everything has been just perfect okay I'm gonna pick up the gimbal that was a little bit too much need to slow that down a little don't I okay so that's I adjusted the gimbal kind of on the horizon there and let me kind of center uh, the drone a little bit on that play structure so again uh, you know I do this so that you can see you know the near and the medium distance and the far distance and some different colors so we'll be able to compare that uh, with the uh, with the other video uh, on natural and again this is on sunny so let's go back and uh, 
go back over uh, roughly by the cell phone tower and uh, and we'll change it to the no moire effect and see what that does for us see if that changes anything or if we can tell anything on the video or if I will be able to see anything on uh, the FPV screen let's see we're down to 53 percent battery that's good CPU is about the same as it was when we were in this same position a little bit ago about 61 centigrade okay turning around this is kind of roughly the same position we were in before maybe I was a little bit closer to the cell phone tower uh, but uh, let me adjust that heading just a little bit. Let's shut off video. We're going to go back into the menu and click on the three dots and go on color again. And we're going to click Moir Off. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, if I'm not, please let me know in the comments. And so I turn Moir Off. So let's see if uh, we can see anything now. Okay guys, uh, so I ran that pattern and I forgot to start recording, so I'm going to start recording now. And full stick forward, so that's why you're going to see a gap in the timeline and we're down to 41% battery. So full stick forward in normal mode. And I am seeing a little bit of uh, darkness on FPV and it's telling us that our battery level is at 40% that's fine we're not going to need any more than that but 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 honestly I can't tell on the FPV screen if there's any difference so let's go let's face north here and I'm uh, I'm pushing both sticks inward trying to uh, bank the drone and yaw the drone at the same time to kind of get a smooth turn here and as we turn you'll see this the the, uh, the video brighten a little bit and let's go that direction and uh, yeah CPU temp is good at 55 degrees centigrade it's amazing how it cools off when you're in the air it's, it's interesting to watch the temperature change. Okay, so I'm going to turn due uh, east here. And again, I'm pushing both sticks in to kind of get that smooth turn. And we'll get pointed directly uh, over the top of Pathway School and over there to Discovery Elementary. So full tilt here. And uh, we're, again, full stick forward in normal mode. We should get up to about eight and a half meters per second, which is roughly 20 miles an hour, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, the road is clear, so I don't think we have any traffic to worry about as we cross the street there. And we'll go right over the top of the school and I'll get you that same view that we got when we were in uh, natural color mode and then sunny color mode. So. Well, it'll be interesting. Like I said, I'm not seeing a big difference on uh, on FPV, so I really am going to be interested to see what the video looks like uh, coming off of the, the memory inside the drone. I'm always tempted to say the SD card, but as you know, this drone does not have an SD card. Okay, so I think that's pointed roughly the same, maybe a little bit off. That's me adjusting the yaw there a little bit. Uh, so yeah, so let's take a look at that uh, at that video and you can again, you know, look at the foreground the uh, the mid uh, part of the the uh, middle part of the video and then you can see the mountains off in the distance and uh, We can compare the three we're down to 32 percent battery. So we'll uh, We'll turn around here and get it back and, and as it hovers look at the CPU temperature go up because it's not getting airflow through the drone and yeah, I had a little bit of a freeze up on FPV there for a second. That is the first time I've had that any issues with that with this drone and and ironically this time I was facing directly to the drone with the antenna uh where some of the other parts of the video I was not. So Okay, here we are. And you can see those guys with their uh with their uh, that, that are playing uh, frisbee golf over there, they're at the other end of the park. While we've got some uh, battery here, let's uh, let's get into the uh, cell phone tower. And one of my favorite things to do is to uh, 
to see if I can get a good orbit, a manual orbit. So let me get up to this thing. I'm going to put the drone into uh, film mode so that I get, uh, and let's get, we, can, we should be able to get closer than that. And I'm going to center on it. And then let's see if I can, uh, if I can get just a little bit of a manual orbit around this guy. And yeah, let me tell you, that film mode really helps because you've got a lot finer control on the, on the sticks. And it helps me uh, keep that, the head of that, uh, of that cell phone tower right in the middle of the screen. And what I'm doing now is I'm separating the sticks. Uh, the right stick I'm moving to the right and the left stick I'm moving to the left. And I think I can't remember when we'll hit return to home here, if that's an algorithm. Okay, I turned off, whoops. I turned off uh, wireless, so hopefully, yeah, okay, there we got it back. So I got, so we're down, I, I was concerned that I would get the FPV connection back. Okay, sorry about that, and I'll cut, obviously it will have cut some of that out. So let's start, I'm getting a beep here, I don't, know exactly why but let's uh, let's go over the top of the uh, cell phone tower here and again we're in film mode and like I said this cell phone tower has been really making some noise today give you a good look at that pick it up and let's bring this guy back down to us yeah so it's gonna go into return to home I am just, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and let it do it. Let's just let it do it and see what happens. That came in at 20%. So, uh, boy, it, it hauls the bail and when it, look at that, it's at like, what is that, nine meters per second there for a second when it was coming back. So we're gonna land with plenty of battery, which is probably good. Let's see how accurate it is now. Precision landing is not enabled. Yeah, and it's it's kind of in a bad spot there right on the curb. We don't want it to land there So I will uh, Yeah, if it doesn't move there a little yeah, it's moving off here. Okay, I'll let it land What I didn't want it to do was land right on the curb there So I think we're good here And I want to make sure you can see that on the GoPro and you can So yeah, you can see uh, it's landing right there on the sidewalk and it'll shut off video itself, and it gives us that message, which is good. Okay, uh, let me get everything shut down, and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay, well, that was uh, an interesting flight, I'll have to say, uh, you know, after that firmware update. Uh, you know, I don't know if, if the update is what made the difference, but we didn't have any disconnections. Uh, the drone flew great. It, it didn't overheat. I can tell you after it landed, I kind of put my hand on the bottom here and I, I could touch it. Now, I will say, you know, we only had it in obstacle avoidance mode there for just a few seconds. So it would have been interesting uh, maybe if I'd have thought of it to turn on obstacle avoidance and see how much that, uh, what that did and as far as heating up the CPU. But the flight that we had was fine, and it was also interesting to see that as the drone was moving through the air, that CPU temperature came down. Whenever you hovered, that CPU, CPU temperature would go back up a little bit, although not too radically. Uh, I, I have to tell you, with regard to the FPV connection, there was only one little blip when uh, the, I was over Discovery School. As, uh, as I was turning around, I, I, it just stuttered for a second, then it came back, it was fine. Not sure what that was about, but other than that, it was great. And like when I was flying the drone over the top of me to the west end of this complex here, I was faced away from the drone. I was standing with my, I did not move. I had my remote control and it was pointed, uh, the, 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 the antenna of the drones were pointed east while the drone was west of me but it was just fine. We had a perfect connection. We had no issues. Similar to what you would find 
on, on a DJI OcuSync drone. You know, it doesn't seem to matter too much unless you're out there long distance, which direction you're pointed. It works pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of have to be pleased, right? Uh, everything seemed to work as it should. Now, you guys will have seen the difference in the video. Uh, I am going to, uh, as soon as I get home, I'm going to upload it from the drone and look at it myself. Hey, okay, so you guys saw my comments about what the different color modes did to the video. Uh, I don't know yet, but uh, in any case, I thought we had a pretty good flight with this guy. In fact, I'm going to say this. It's the best flight that I've had to date, and uh, I wish it would have flown like that from the very start, right? But, uh, but regardless, I'm going to keep testing this guy, and we'll, we'll keep looking at it. Again, I'm going to tell you that the, the engineers at Hubson, when they looked at my flight logs, they felt like they, that I might have a problem with the motherboard on this particular drone, so they said they're going to send me another drone. Haven't seen, a, seen it yet, but uh, when they do, of course, I'll test that one out. And uh, gosh, I kind of after this flight today, I'm kind of feeling like I want to take this one back out to the Snake River Canyon and fly it out at a little more distance. I think the furthest we went away here today was, I don't know, roughly 200 meters, something like that. Not terribly far, but as you saw, the connection was always good. So uh, at any rate, that's about it. Uh, uh, I hope you guys uh, it, it found this informative. Uh, it was interesting for me to see how well the f drone flew today as opposed to my other experiences with it. Uh, it felt really good. So uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. And most of all, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, uh, the little uh, Hubson Zeno Mini Pro uh, just an interesting little drone, and let's just hope that uh, Hubson keeps improving it. We'll see you later.